let's create a scenario here where we're, we're talking about a health, a person with a healthy microbiome, right? And they have great diversity, but they develop an infection. And I think before you said that when you develop the infection, you'll be in a state of dysbiosis. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. They take their course of antibiotics. What's happening to that person's microbiome during that, that phase? Well, there are uh, three main things that happen within the microbiome when you take antibiotics. One, a loss of diversity. Two, um, you are causing widespread damage to the species. And three, you are choosing or selecting the uh, resistant microbes. And so effectively, if you think about we were just talking about dysbiosis a moment ago. And then you, the next question was what happens when you take antibiotics and after describing them, basically what I've just described is you are medically inducing dysbiosis and, um, with the exception of adding the antibiotic resistance element. Are the antibiotics, are they eradicating species? Like are, are we actually losing, I think you said so some studies show you may only have 50 species, but then there's you know other uh, reviews and whatnot that'll say 300 to 1,000. So the jury's a little bit out there. But when we take whatever the number is that we have, we take antibiotics, are we losing species or are we kind of just like dimming the light and losing the total number of the good guys that exist in the gut, but we still have the species that we had before we were taking the antibiotics well, the the um the term that we use for species when we're looking at these things is is richness richness is the term for a number of different species which is a little bit different than diversity by the way diversity also takes into account the presence of different species so like for example you know um, we wouldn't call it um diverse if we had 300 of one species and you know one of like five other species right like that's just, but uh, anyway, so with, with this, when we look at richness, which is the number of different species, we see that when you take antibiotics, you are re definitely reducing the richness. Now the question is, will they come back? Because I do, because if they do come back, then it's more akin to what you're describing of dimming the lights. Um, and if you look at the research, it is clear the gut does eventually recover we do get the species back. How long does that take usually? This is the million dollar question. And that brings me to, it feels like this is a good time for us to talk about a new study that came out uh, about a year ago in the journal Cell, which um, we've talked about on this show before. Cell is one of the most prestigious medical journals out there. And in this study, Simon, they took a group of 20 people. Not let me say these people did not have infections. And the reason why they chose to study healthy people is because if you, as we were discussing a moment ago, if a person has an infection, like their microbiome is already disrupted. So let's start with a healthy microbiome that has not been disrupted and see what the effect of these antibiotics are. And so they gave four different types of antibiotics to these people and they watched to see what happens. Now, our response to these antibiotics is very individualized. So you can't say that because you took this antibiotic, this is exactly how long your microbiome is going to be knocked down, and this is when you will recover. For the majority of the people in this study, and by the way, it was only five days of antibiotics, only five days, whereas like many antibiotics people take for 10 or 14 days, and in some cases, people are taking for even more than 14 days. In this study, the vast majority of people recovered their microbiome by two months. Okay. And were they, were they adopting any specific protocols i know we're going to talk for about. recovery no they did not but right. there were people that were in this study that wished that they had specific protocols because there were some bad things that took place so there was a again these are healthy people they showed up and they and participated in a study and were grateful that they did this do you know what kind of antibiotics they were taking yeah the, these were mostly antibiotics that were given for pneumonia so there was basically like a series of four different antibiotics that were like typical sort of pneumonia style uh antibiotics so like an example would be we have a floxacin Levofoxacin is one of the examples. So we call that Levoquin in the United States. So um, anyway, there were three people that had a completely different response to the antibiotics. And it's actually quite disturbing what happened to these three people. They 
lost diversity, they continued to lose diversity, and they did not recover their microbiome for six months. And in that process, um, their microbiome, and the authors, by the way, literally say what I'm about to say. This is not me just being hyperbolic. This is like the exact language they used in the paper. Their microbiome resembled what you would find in a person who is sick, like extremely sick, critically ill in the intensive care unit. So um, we don't know exactly why that happened to those particular people. Did they look at, uh, at what these people were eating? Uh, they did not look at what these people were eating, but they did look at their diversity. And again, this is a very small study. Um, one of the uh, challenges that we have when we get into this space of discussing antibiotics and what happens after antibiotics is that we need more data. Yeah, I was just thinking then, like, are we are we assuming that antibiotics across the board all have the same effect? Because no, they there don't. are so many, right? No, they don't. They have different effects. But I think what they're showing in this study, though, is that like here are these different antibiotics that you could use to treat pneumonia. Again, pneumonia, if you don't take an antibiotic, can be a life threatening condition. So we you need the antibiotics. And with these, uh, with in this case, here are these three people who have a very very different response that appears to be like kind of disturbing in terms of how this all played out. And what they found for these three people is if you look at the starting diversity within their microbiome, again, this is a small number, um, we need more data, but if you look at their starting diversity, their starting diversity was significantly less than the other people. That's interesting. That reminds me of the people in the Sonnenberg's fiber fermented food study with the, the folks who didn't do so well on the fiber diet. Yeah. They had low diversity because Same. they because with the low diversity yeah. they were struggling to ramp up their fiber. We could talk. That's a whole right. other stuff. But that that makes me me think about this whole discussion of how do antibiotics affect the microbiome. It seems like your starting point is really important. So if if you're someone who is healthy and has a rich microbiome, it may be that the effect of that antibiotic is different to say someone with IBS or a condition like SIBO who already has some disruption to the microbiome. I think that there's points of vulnerability that exist with specific people. And, you know, one of the ways that we know this, Simon, is that there is a, there's a common infection called Clostridioides difficile. It's extremely dangerous. Unchecked, untreated, this infection can clearly be life-threatening. And I've had patients, granted years ago, but I've had patients who had to have their colon removed because this infection was so out of control. So when you say unchecked, untreated, someone could have that and not have any symptoms? Uh, no, they would typically have diarrhea. But um, some people, what they'll do when they have diarrhea is like, for example, they think that it's just a bug, a tummy bug, like a virus, and they'll take Imodium. And it, so Imodium is loperamide, which is taken to like basically slow down diarrhea, slow down bowel motility. And in the process of doing this, their intentions are good, but unfortunately it's, it's not a good choice because what ends up happening is your body is actually trying to evacuate this, um, uh, toxin that comes from the bacteria and you are now trapping the toxin inside your colon, which leads to something called toxic megacolon. And that's how people end up either in a life threatening compromised position or potentially getting their colon removed as a result of this infection. So, but the but the point with the infection though, is that this is one of the clear cut, undeniable. Every single doctor in the United States, if they if they're board, if they if they're like a decent doctor, is going to acknowledge that this is a very real risk with antibiotics. Is that you could develop this infection after antibiotics, and if you take a look and see who are the people that are most at risk. Who are the people who are most at risk from developing this infection? The people who are most at risk are the people who have inflammatory bowel disease. And these are the people that have the deepest dysbiosis at baseline. So there's a vulnerability there. So I think that there's a vulnerability there where if you already have a, a damaged dysbiotic gut, then there is a higher risk of having complications as a result of your antibiotics. Mm -hmm.